Season 5 of The Walking Dead was already off to a bang by the time we got to the third episode. The trailers made us believe that we were getting this long, drawn-out storyline of the group working together with the termites to go to Washington in search of a cure, but that's not at all what happened. The first episode saw our group take their revenge and escape Terminus. Now on the road, they ran into Father Gabriel and took shelter in his church, though the termites weren't far behind them looking for their own form of revenge. That leads us to the beginning of Season 5, Episode 3, Four Walls and a Roof. This is another one of the more brutal and horrific episodes of the series, but also, in a strange way, a very satisfying conclusion to the Terminus arc. While this episode gave us a conclusion to the arc, it was also only the third episode of this season, and that hadn't really been done before. For the past couple seasons, storylines had been very clearly defined by their half-seasons, but Season 5 was already going in a completely completely different direction than we thought it would, so this episode continued that trend, but also spelled out some signs of concern for future episodes. So grab your red-handled machete and fulfill your promises as we head into a place with four walls and a roof. We start off the episode on a gruesome note. Gareth and the termites are having dinner by the fire as Bob sits on the ground, missing a leg. And that's all I'll say on that matter, you can put two and two together. Gareth is giving a speech about the new natural order of things, why they're eating what they're eating, and he's very clearly been driven over the edge. The termites have lost their home, and now he's talking about getting revenge on Rick and the whole group. Bob starts sobbing, or laughing, and then we think that he's just lost it himself. But then he calls them all idiots, and reveals that he's been bitten. So what they're eating is not exactly healthy. The termites all start arguing and worrying about what's going to happen to them, all while Bob continues to laugh and scream. <laughs> you eating Janus and shut up! Meanwhile, Sasha is out looking for Bob. Using an infrared scope, which seems to be like the most useful thing you could have at night, but walkers still end up sneaking up on her. She's then joined by Rick and Tyrese, and the group is clearly worried that something is going on, not only because Bob is missing, but Carol and Daryl are too. What they don't know is that Daryl and Carol are chasing a car with a white cross on it, the car that took Beth back in season 4. Speaking of crosses, this brings us back to the church, where the group starts confronting Father Gabriel. There's people watching them in the woods, there's members of the group that are missing, and Rick makes the father do some confessing of his own. So Gabriel tells a story, about how when everything started, he got scared and locked everybody outside of the church. He says that the Lord sent them there to punish him, so he welcomes his punishment. The group realizes that he doesn't have anything to hide, he's just a coward. Glenn then says that somebody is outside lying in the grass, so they go outside and find Bob and some walkers. They eliminate the walkers and bring him inside, though a stray bullet grazes by Rick, so he shoots in the trees hoping that a shot will land in one of the termites. He heads inside, and we see a red A painted on the side of the church. Inside, Bob explains that the termites didn't have Daryl and Carol, but they did say that they drove off. He also explains where he was, and Rick asks Gabriel if he knows where they were talking about. Gabriel says it's only a few minutes walk from where they are, and Rick starts thinking of a plan. They want to give Bob some bandages and supplies, but he tells them to save it, and reveals to the group that he's been bit. Abraham says, enough is enough, it's too dangerous here for the savior of mankind scientist Eugene, and he wants to leave. Rick objects, saying that Daryl and Carol aren't back yet, but Abraham says that by the time they get back here, everybody will probably just be a pile of bones. He commands Eugene to come with him, and Rick says that they aren't taking the bus. Abraham says, watch me, and just as a brawl is about to break out, Glenn intervenes, saying that they all need to stick together in order to accomplish all of this. Defeating the termites, going to Washington, it's not any good unless they're all together. Glenn gets through to Abraham, and he says that they're leaving in the morning, no matter what. Sasha attempts to comfort Bob, but he really just ends up comforting her, saying that he didn't want to tell her about the bite, because then it all becomes about the end, and he really liked the middle that they're in. Rick delivers a speech on their plan to take the fight to them before they attack next, and Sasha says that she wants to go out there with them. 
Tyrese tries to get her to stay at the church because when Bob wakes up, all he's gonna wanna see is her face, but Sasha declines and the group heads out. As they leave, we hang around for a little while and the termites come out of the woods. They head into the church where only Gabriel, Carl, Judith, Rosita, Eugene, and Tyrese are. Gareth gives a speech, saying that he knows who's in here and who isn't because he just watched everybody else leave and head into the woods. Gareth gives them the option to come out, but they stay silent inside, all except for Judith, who begins crying. Just as they're about to force the door open, bullets fire from the back of the church, and it's Rick and the whole group coming back into the church and forcing the termites to their knees. Gareth says that there's no point in begging, but then he still starts begging and giving excuses for why they started doing what they had to. Gareth says that there must be a reason why he didn't just kill them as soon as they entered the church, and Rick says yeah, they didn't want to waste the bullets. And as we see the red machete, Rick says that he already made Gareth a promise. Rick, Abraham, Sasha, and Michonne start slicing up the termites. Glenn, Maggie, and Tara look on in shock and horror. When it's over, Rick reminds them that it could have been them instead. Gabriel comes out and sees what's been made of his church, saying that this is supposed to be the Lord's home, but Maggie says it's not, it's just four walls and a roof. The next morning, the group say their goodbyes to Bob, and he stops Rick to thank him for taking him in, that he thought that the world was done for with no good people left, but he knows that they can change the world and rebuild it, and Rick starts to think that maybe they can. Sasha and Bob have one last conversation before he closes his eyes, and just as Sasha realizes what she has to do, big brother Tyrese comes in and takes the burden off her shoulders. They bury Bob, and the groups go their separate ways, Abraham leading a group to Washington, Rick staying with the other half to wait for Daryl and Carol to come back. Rick opens the map that Abraham left for him that says, Sorry I was an asshole, come to Washington, the new world's gonna need Rick Grimes. Michonne stands guard outside the church, and Father Gabriel comes to join her, saying that he can't stand being inside that church any longer. They hear some rustling leaves in the woods, so Michonne goes to investigate and finds Daryl. She asks him where Carol is, and he tells somebody off screen to come on out before the episode ends. So something that I think flies under the radar during this whole storyline is the misdirection of Father Gabriel and how brilliant that bit of writing really is. Over the past couple episodes and really overall storylines, we've been conditioned to not trust any incoming strangers or people, especially after everything at Terminus. Enter Father Gabriel, and the group doesn't trust whatever he's got going on. Everything at the church seems suspicious, how he's survived this long on his own, the writing on the church outside, the bodies, none of it adds up to this being a person telling the truth. Add to that these people watching them in the woods and the seeming kidnap of three members of the group, and Father Gabriel seems like target number one. Not only is this very front and center for viewers, but in the previous episode we saw a returning plotline that we hadn't seen since last season, and that's the car with the cross on it. It's not a huge jump in logic to assume that this guy dressed as a priest could have connections to this car with a cross on it, especially because this car with a cross and subsequent entire storyline with Beth was not a storyline in the comics because Beth didn't exist in the comics. So even for readers of the comic, this car with a cross on it was a huge red flag. And even a possible indication that this whole Father Gabriel storyline was going in a completely different direction. Of course, none of this ends up being the case, and Father Gabriel really was telling the truth about his whole situation. He really just was a coward. And this revelation comes in full display in this episode. Rick's reaction to this is kind of funny, like he was almost hoping that Father Gabriel was going to be part of Terminus so that way he could use him as some sort of like leverage against their attackers, so when Father Gabriel spills his beans about everything, Rick just kind of seems disappointed. So like I said, this is really the wrap up episode for the whole Terminus arc, which wasn't something that I was expecting and I don't think a majority of the audience was expecting either. Terminus was what the entirety of season 4B was set 
setting up. The trailer for season 5 made Terminus out to be this huge plotline, only for it to be done after 3 episodes. But does this mean it was a letdown of a storyline? Absolutely not. In fact, I think that the Terminus arc is up there with my all-time favorite arcs in the show. It was subversive, explosive, and huge for the development of our characters, and that's really all you want out of an arc in this show. However, because it only took up three episodes of the season, it left new storylines to take its place, and this is where we get one of the worst of the best seasons of The Walking Dead. The entire Beth Grady Memorial Hospital arc is among my least favorite in the show's history. There was a lot of buildup for Beth's character going forward, and this storyline ended in an actual letdown of a story. Now, that wasn't this episode's fault, so let's talk more about this actual episode. The ending of this arc is hugely important for a number of characters, primarily Rick Grimes. While the birth of the Murderbeard era might have been with Joe and the Claimers, this was really the episode when the Murderbeard learned how to walk. Rick tells Gareth that he didn't want to waste the bullets on them, but Rick also wanted to kill Gareth more personally, both for what he did to Bob and what he was planning on doing to everybody else. Rick promised Gareth in the premiere episode that he was going to kill him with the red machete, and he follows through on that promise here. But this isn't just an episode about Rick going down a darker path, because his conversation with Bob at the end brings some levity to the episode. Bob talks about how they can rebuild the world, and how Rick is a good man in a world of bad people, and this is really one of the first talks of a new world that Rick would eventually go on to build. There's also a moment in this episode where tensions arise within the group, more specifically Abraham and Rick. Watching this back, it's kind of funny because there are so few times that anybody ever disagrees with Rick, at least to his face, but Abraham was really the only person that wasn't afraid to challenge Rick and end up losing very badly in the process. There was of course Shane, who ended up losing very badly, and all of the villains over the years who end up losing very badly. But Abraham stood his ground against Rick, not because he didn't think Rick was a good leader, but because he thought there was a bigger picture. Shane wanted Rick out of the way for his own selfish reasons, as did basically all of the enemies that he faced, but Abraham was the only one who challenged Rick without having a selfish goal in mind. Or at least he's the only one that I can think of at the moment, but these two eventually do find common ground and a common goal, to get rid of the termites and compromise about the trip to Washington. This wouldn't have been achieved if not for the person who stood between them, perhaps the only person who could have prevented them from actually fighting, and that's Glenn. Both of these men have a respect for Glenn that they don't really have for anybody else, and vice versa. It just goes to show how different the dynamics were in these episodes, and honestly what the show lost over the years when it came to delivering deaths for shock value, these interesting character dynamics and relationships. This was a brutal episode. We started off on a rather disgusting intro, and ended on some of the most gruesome deaths in the show, along with the death of one of our group, Bob. But this episode was also filled with clever misdirection, triumphs in the moment, and overall hope for the future. This is really a quintessential Walking Dead episode that doesn't fall in the category of season premiere, mid-season premiere, season finale, or mid-season finale. This episode wrapped up one of the greatest story arcs in the history of the show, and is part of what makes looking back at season 5 such a treat. So that's four walls and a roof. What are your thoughts on the episode? Let me know in the comments below and which episode you want me to cover next. Also, make sure to scroll through the playlist of episode analysis videos, because sometimes I get suggestions on episodes that I've already done. So check there first, and then leave me a comment if it's not there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe for more content like this. If you do, then I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.